Hey guys, quick one on fabrication of our glazing columns. So, let me show you quick. These are a few pieces and parts to the puzzle. So, we got three by three by quarter inch wall, grade 500, um, three quarter inch by 12 inch steel plate. This is quarter by six. So we got this uh, glazing detail. It's not typical, typical construction. This is kind of a, um, I don't know, we're trying to um, cut through the wall. So we need to resupport the wall. So these are our power lambs. And these are five and a quarter by 16. And then these are treated besides, so they're power lamps with a treatment. So they could be out in the weather for years. Um, but they're not, they're in our walls. But during construction, you know, they're gonna be getting wet and blah, 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 blah. So they're protected, so. So we come along here and cut through our floors, our layers of floors. And uh, which happen to be two and three quarters total thickness after we you get your subfloor and your hardwood floor, our three quarter inch plywood, our quarter inch hardy. We had two and three quarters. So you see there's a series of holes. And then what these series of holes are doing is where those columns are going to go through. I'm going to go down through the basement and sit on top of the slab which is on top of the footing for bearing uh, when the load comes down from the second floor floor in the roof load it's going to come down hit them power lamps and then get carried through those columns down to the foundation uh, footing down to the ground so they they're in sets of twos because two hold up one beam and then in between them two are, are glazing openings and those run all the way up right up to the roof line just below the top floor ceiling the third floor ceiling so because the because this wall gets cut right in half with glazing and then there's verticals that run up and cut the wall in that direction so anyways we ended up just cutting um, cutting those out. So there's a six inch wall centered on this. I'm sorry, that's the face. So um, two and three quarters to the center of each side. And then a um, two by 10 out in the front, two by six, two by 10. Double wall, one bears and one allows for insulation and profile. Um, by the way, we're going to be filling up those columns. We got a special concrete mix. Um, you tend to make up concrete or grout and you try to pour it down a long section of column like this is 14 feet or so. Um, it tends to um, separate. So SCC stands for consolidating concrete, which does keep the pour uniform. You know, when you go to put on that column, it's going to be a uniform pour. We're not going to get segregation of the, of with the water and the materials. Um, so SCC stands for self uh, compacting. They call it consolidating. Um, you know, and it has special additives in it to keep it um, polymer additives to keep it plastic. I guess you'd call it super plasticizers, and they have and a corrosion inhibitor in it for the steel because that concrete's gonna be sitting in that steel and the last thing we wanna do is have that column rot from the inside out, rust from the inside out. So it has a special inhibitor, corrosion inhibitor. So I guess that's what the plus means. And um, that's the manufacturer who makes it. So this particular bag um, mixes with a fiber that we're gonna add in with that for sh sheer strength you know, concrete's good in compression, but when you try to push on it, it, it tends to crack. And this 
stuff holds it together in that direction. So one bag of the of the hairs. Oh, it used to be fiberglass. This is very, very strong material. It's a polymer material. One bag of that, one bag of that, and then um, we'll be pouring down, we'll be filling these cores. It gives us a safety factor of, I don't know, around four, between four and five with the concrete in there, so. Uh, I think I figured two of these could hold up what uh, seven of them are doing. If you just had two, it'd do the work, but um, but you know because other forces hit it the wind hits it earthquakes could hit it water could hit it, but um, You know for another fifty dollars and a little bit of time just Pour it up with some concrete and give it the extra strength So you know we we did shots on that slab and that slab is not perfect So there's some high spots and there's some low spots so what we did was we set up the transit up on that first floor and we took shots down into the basement slab so each column in is unique to where it's placed, not one length is the same. So we got to label each column and cut them accordingly and uh, put them where they belong. That gives us level when that, when that power lamp sits in those beam cradles we have a level condition at the top of the glazing opening. Um, so here's what we did. We come down here and set our base plates, and they're just sitting there for now. Eventually, we're going to end up drilling and, and shielding through the slab. Then um, there's the corresponding holes above. And they come very close to this wall, just sneaking by it, actually. You can see we had to trim out that little section to get that, that column plumb to the wall. Then after that, those are all set in place. Um, we're gonna come along. We have some quarter inch four by four angle. And um, so this angle will come and get, once the columns are all in place, we'll come along the side of the column and we'll sit in between courses and we'll weld up the angle to the columns. And then we'll do is drill through the block fully and send some threaded rod, three quarter inch galvanized through, and we'll bolt that up to some plates on the face, um, which here, these plates, I gotta drill holes in the middle there, and that gets plated on the face. So there'll be one high and one real low, cause we're gonna dig out that uh, sand out of the way eventually, and ins we're gonna waterproof it all really good and insulate that, and that's the time where we'll just bolt up that wall. That gives the wall strength. And you know, it gives lateral support to the columns. It helps the columns work. So each one's helping each other. Anyways, that's what we're up to. We're gonna fabricate them columns and put the cradles in there. And uh, we'll end up drilling through the cradles and through bolting them to the wood. We'll through bolt steal the wood. And then, um, of course, when we send them down, we'll have to weld the base plates in there because we can't get the base plates through those small holes. Anyways, that's it, guys. Just a quick one on um, what we're going to be up to now for the next few days is getting these columns going, and uh, we'll be welding and stuff. So maybe we'll make a couple welding videos, or at least you'll be able to see the beginnings of the, what we're doing. Anyways, that's it, guys, for now. Till the next one. Be safe.